All right, I'm going to introduce the next uh, the next talk and the last talk of the day. Uh, after this, we will be giving out the uh, prizes uh, from the Lockpick uh, Village. So if you haven't done the little contest that Chris is running in there, um, there'll be another uh, another hour to do that. Um, but he'll be giving out uh, prizes for first, second, and third place in that at the end of this talk. So uh, without further ado, uh, this is John Moore. His talk is War Dining and Stroll Trolling with a Robot. Uh, for almost a decade, John has dedicated his time and attention towards providing a comprehensive hands-on information technology and security education to aspiring professionals in the Detroit area. He has taught over 200 sections spanning multiple platforms, including Windows, Linux, and the Cisco IOS. He has prevent presented many security-related courses, running the gamut from hack attacks to computer forensics. As a result, as of recent, he is researching how to extend the capabilities of smartphones and the security impl impl implications of such extended capabilities. Uh, this is John Moore. You guys hear me? Okay. All right. Um, kind of the, the birth of this talk. We have a little more time in this. So I kind of got to break it down. Um, are you guys off in the Michigan area, most of you guys? Okay. If you are, you're, you're familiar with the place called Frankenmuth, right? Yeah. I was, I was heading up north one time. And I had my phone tethered, and I had my computer tethered to my phone, okay? And I had, I had to root my phone to get this capability. And while I was sitting there waiting for my wife and my kids to come out from the, using the restroom at Frankenmuth on our way up north, um, all these phones kept trying to join my wireless hotspot. My phone was attempting, they were just wandering right on. In fact, there was a lot of Blackberries. They just said, hey, there's open connection, jump on, okay? And I go, wow, this could be a security issue. We could have a problem here. People shouldn't just be jumping on untrusted uh, Wi-Fi. We know this, right? But we never really had it in terms of being such a small, compact structure. So I started doing some research, and I discovered I was like, someone's got to research this out there. And I discovered there was no research on this, OK? And I realized that my sister, my mother, they have smartphones, and they don't really know how to use them. And there's all these implications of having this device in their hand, and they don't know exactly how to manage it. So I, when I started looking up the information, I realized that no one really did anything on this yet. So what I, what I did is I effectively kind of trying to fill that niche. Okay? So this talk is about understanding. Um, first, uh, there's, there's the concept of rooting your device. You guys are familiar with this? Sound familiar? Okay. Um, with this, people always say, well, just don't root your device. It's bad. Okay? But there's a reason we root it to start with. What do we gain by rooting it? Access. We gain access. We gain capabilities. Okay? So it's not necessarily bad, but it's got to be, you know, what did we learn from Uncle Ben? With great power comes great responsibility, right? So we have to look at this from that aspect. And that's kind of the impetus, the drive behind this talk. And I won't have you raise your hand because you all fall in this category. But if you have a smartphone or if you know someone has a smartphone, this talk's for you, OK? So this affects everybody in this room. All right, so let's first do all the disclaimers. When I did this research, I did it all off of my own devices. I did this in my home. I did it with, with my own computers, my own network devices. Do realize that if you, uh, you guys may or may not know, if you start without permission sniffing external networks, that's illegal. You can't do it, OK? So, but the, does, that, does, does legality stop the bad guy? No. And so, this is, so the whole purpose is to make sure you guys understand how to do this stuff, how the bad guys is going to do this stuff, what are the implications of the bad guys doing this stuff? And then we'll go from there, OK? Now, the good news is you know, um, I, there's a takeaway. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I'm going to scare you, and then I'll show you how to fix it. OK, that's the whole point. Why, why scare you if I can't tell you how to make, make good with it? OK, so that's pretty much here. It's just disclaimer saying, be a good guy. Don't be a bad guy. You guys are going to learn this today. You're going to be able to walk around. It's excessively easy to do, OK? Um, but realize that there's legality issues and other issues. But again, to do the research, when it's your own network, I hope I don't sue myself. The only one's going to win there is a lawyer. Okay? All right. Um, so let's talk about some of the misconceptions. We've had this history moving up to now that phones are phones, right? They're this thing that find, used to be on the wall, and now it's in our pocket. And, and that's what we see them as. Okay? But when smartphones came out, that actually changed. Now, if you guys watch the Android pro program go, um, and, or the, when they put it all together before they had ice cream sandwich and all the good ones, um, it was effectively a, a, a computer. It was a Linux kernel 
that they added phone capabilities. So your smartphone isn't really a phone at all. It's a computer with phone capabilities. Can you guys accept that? Okay, it handles packets just like computers. In fact, if you do things like rooting it, you can put operating systems on there. We'll talk about that too. And with that, you get all those capabilities that come with that. But this is a computer with phone capabilities. And most people think is it's a phone with apps. That's different because phone with apps necessarily doesn't mean it has packets and things like that. But when we start turning on our internet on our phones, it's acting just like any other wireless computer would. Okay, so when we classify smartphones, we shouldn't classify them as phones. We should classify them as what? Mini computers that we happen to keep in our pocket. Okay, so good, right, with phone capabilities. So this is first, the first thing I want to bring to light is let's make sure we understand that. The next is I wanted to do these, these exploits with no money or little money. I don't know about you guys, but you know, I want it to be cheap. If I'm going to do it, I'm not going to spend 100 bucks to hack it. I'm going to try to do it for zero dollars and zero cents. And if I can't do it for zero dollars and zero cents, I'm going to try to do it for ten dollars, right? And then twenty move up the line. All right. Everything I'm going to show you guys today, except for the remediation, some of the remediations was free. Okay. So wow. All right. Now we can't. It doesn't cost anything to do. Um, all you need is a smartphone, which you can get from any provider out there. All right. That can be rooted, and we're moving from there. All right. And so. Um, all these tools we'll be getting are either from the internet or now it's called Google Play. It used to be Google Market, right? I'm working on Android. This can be done with the iPhone too, and I will reference it. What tools will work for the iPhone? But if you guys have an iPhone or an Android, this is all possible. All right, and like I said, I did some research. Even though some of the things I'm going to talk about are not new at all. Okay, you guys probably have heard of things like war driving. We're going to talk about that. These are old concepts, but this is a new implementation, and no one's touching it. No one's talking about it, and again, it affects everybody in this room. So with that, I had to create a, a language that worked around these, these concepts that are, well, brand new. Okay? Now, war walking's not new, but it's got a new face. War dining is, and we'll talk about where this comes in the picture. Wi-Fi faking, notice the what? PH. You guys heard of phishing, right? There's a social engineer component to this. And once you Wi-Fi fake, you can start what? Stroll trolling. Yeah, don't say that five times fast. you get tongue-tied. All right? But you'll understand what this is. And it comes from understanding how Wi-Fi faking works. And this is a social engineering technique that makes this possible. OK, so and then at the end, after I explain all this stuff, I'm going to show you guys how to fix it. Okay, And we fix it just like we do laptops. But again, we have this misconception that phones are phones with apps versus what? Computers with <laughs> All right, awesome. OK, so what do we got? Let's start with the phone. You go to your provider, you get a phone, you go, all right, I got a phone. I would really like to not have to pay to tether it. I would really like to run. Wireshark from it. You guys know what Wireshark is? Okay, it's used to capture what? Packets. Packets, good. All right, but you can't do this with an unrooted device. And if you go into Google Play, there'll be a whole category of apps that say, your phone must be what to run these? All right, now we got a new issue. Okay, so if you want to root it, I, I have an HTC phone that I used for this. Um, there's other programs for er other different types. Okay, so all you have to do is literally go to YouTube, type your phone with root. There's probably a tutorial and all the links to the files to it. Most rooting takes less than 10 minutes. In fact, when I did mine, I did off of the, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I did off the 2.2 the kernel, so I used unrevoked. It literally took 10 minutes or less to do it, okay? Now, understand what this is doing. You are effectively rooting your device, which you're accomplishing by exploiting a vulnerability and dropping a payload that has the capability to allow you to escalate your privileges to root when you want. Okay, so if any of you guys went to the Metasploit Lab or the Armitage, this is no different. Someone found a, found a hack for either the iPhone or for the uh, Android. And once they do that, instead of giving the bad guys control, they give you the ability to become admin. But if it wasn't for that, you're locked out of admin. You're just a regular user. You guys good with this? Okay, so this is what we're gaining with rooting. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of rooting. You just got a brand new phone that costs 600 bucks, but since you got your two-year plan, you walked that door for free. And you walk home, you go, I really want it rooted. And you go to root it, and um, yeah, it bricked. Uh-oh, what do you got to do now? Yeah, you're going to have to go give them some crazy story, try to get a replacement. If you don't have the insurance, you're going to pay big on it, all right? So doing this can be bad. Don't, I'm not telling you run out and, and root your phone. But if you root it, you gain capabilities. Well, what do you gain? Well, we can actually, depending on the right tools, we can set up a new ROM in there and make this a pen test tool. We could actually have Armitage or Backtracks running right from our phone and grabbing packets off the network. Okay, you guys follow so far? We can't do that, what's not rooted. Wi-Fi tethering. Now you can do that through 
your service provider, but it usually has a cost associated. Once you root it, it becomes free. Okay? Enhanced file management. You only can get into regular files usually, but now that you're rooted, you can be what? You can be admin, which means you can get into all the files. So enhanced file management. All right? And this is actually good for the, some admin will argue for BYOD, bring your own device, that it's OK to root it because at least you can see everything. If the bad guys get to root it, they're going to leave it in places that you can't touch as a regular user. You guys cool with that? Now again, I'm not advocating that here, and I'm going to advocate something else later, keeping it factory. But this is one, one type of thought out there about how to handle these devices. And another one that's very nice is, believe it or not, you can't get a simple screen capture for these things unless it's rooted. It needs admin privileges to get there. So there's other things besides here, besides these. Um, what I really like is this one. And this one has implications to stuff that you know, may turn into talks later. So for instance, I don't know if you guys know or not, these devices don't usually come encrypted. And I don't know if you know, in Michigan, you can get pulled over for texting, and they'll throw your machine on this device, and they just take everything. Okay? And they'll be able to tell you can't just go in and say, I deleted that file. In the background through the forensics investigation, it will show that you texted there. Okay? Now, there's ROMs out there that are being developed that have full disk encryption. Guess what goes bye-bye then? But you're not going to be able to put that in if you didn't do what to your phone first. Okay? So moving forward, we may see things like this fall out of these type of ROM projects. In fact, I, don't quote me on this, but I believe, I don't, didn't do heavy research in it, but I believe that the Department of Defense is working on an Android type kernel for this exact purpose because they don't want their stuff to get out there, right? Okay? Now, moving forward, companies may start doing this full disk encryption. We may not, we're not there yet, all right? But right now, so your system's open. So, I mean, look at all this stuff we gain by doing it. That's great. But also, you might void your warranty. You're not going to update your phone, which means that later vulnerabilities are going to become more prevalent. Okay, so do understand that there's a trade-off between rooting and not rooting it. You guys good with that? Okay. All right, so once you root it, you'll get used to seeing this. What is this the picture of? Yeah, once you want to request anything that has admin rights, it's going to pop up in your head and say, or pop up on your phone and go, hey, we would like to be admin. Would you let us be admin this once? And if your phone's rooted, you can say yes, and it says, okay, you're admin. That's where that extra capability comes from. Okay, now to do this hack based on this, we got the device rooted, what are we going to do now? Okay, we need a couple things. Let's, a packet sniffer. A common one we said for computers is what? Wireshark. Wireshark. Great program. Use it all the time. Okay? Wi-Fi hotspot. Again, the mobile tethering, right? Okay, and again, we can, we can do this without. We can pay the money and do it too. And an aggregation tool. Now, here's the deal. You guys said you use Wireshark. How many people said they, they used Wireshark here? Okay, now once you get that PCAP file, which is everything you gathered, right? How do you analyze it then? There's thousands and thousands, maybe millions of packets. You just start going one through one and going, oh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. It's brutal, okay? So you need a tool that can aggregate that data, put it in a way that's really easy to read, and we'll go from there. We're going to use uh, a tool called NetWitness for that. We're going to talk about that. Awesome tool. It will do some really amazing things. You guys will see this stuff becomes trivial after we use these tools. Okay, so some smartphone facts. I was reading uh, Time Magazine in February said that almost half the population owns smartphones. Okay, well, this is a computer in their pocket. This is a viable uh, platform for exploitation. Okay, and what if you take this, this device that's been, been rooted and maybe been hacked and you put it on a network? What could it do? It can, it can infect that network. It can become a pivot point for it, right? So we got, we got some big problems that could arise from here. All right, but again, half the population almost has these devices. Uh, modern data plants have data limits, and they just announced that they're not going to be giving out at least ATT. I don't know about Sprint, but I mean ITT. Um, Verizon will not be giving out unlimited data plans as a, as a legacy if you already have it, if you want the free phone. You can keep the plan, but you've got to pay the six, seven hundred bucks for the new phone. Okay? If you want to re-up your, pl your, your plan to get the hundred dollar phone, you're going to take a, a package like four meg or four gigs. Okay? And I don't know if you guys, I download a ton of podcasts, security-based mostly. Okay? And they take up huge amounts. Now, how do we get around this from stealing our data, from, from using all that data in our plan? What can we do to make that work a little better for us? We join it to a Wi-Fi. They have created a context that's making it so we're going to get hacked. Okay? But they haven't realized that yet because maybe they don't know about this. All right, so open networks are highly available in the public. This actually had a huge effect on my talk over here. Okay, we'll talk about this later. I'll see if you guys can figure out what happened. Uh, the last time I gave this talk was in B-Side Chicago, and all this stuff worked like a champ. Okay? I, I was, we had a ton of people join, and we'll talk about that moving forward. Smartphones are pa send packets like computer. We already discussed that. 
Okay, so let's get going. Let's get this, this environment up and running. You go to Google Play, and if it didn't say installed already, it would say root shark for root, which is Wireshark for your device, which you couldn't install unless it was rooted. Cost how much? It was free. Again, I already had it installed, so it didn't show you it was free. But right now I paid zero dollars, zero cents. Now I have a rooted device that can capture packets. Does this sound like a powerful device already? Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, so let's talk about it a little bit. Again, we can get it from Marketplace, which is now called Google Play in the last couple months. Um, it's used to passively sniff packets. Do we understand the difference between actively and passively? What does that mean? Passively sniffing packets. You're not ingesting any, net, any traffic under the network. You're operating in this case mode. And, and what does that mean to the network I'm monitoring? It doesn't usually see me. I, there, depending on what I do, I'm going to show you some tricks that might get me noticed, might not. But nonetheless, I'm not going to be seen. I am just looking from a tower view down on traffic. And I don't know, maybe I'm looking for a white Bronco. If any of you are old enough, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, gives network and security professionals the ability to analyze data to and from the target device. Now, this is good for you admin out there because let's say you do have iPhones or, or Android devices in your work environment. By running this on there, you can see what data is escaping, okay? So this isn't a bad thing. The, right now, we haven't really, you know, there's a lot of wonderful tools. And as you guys know in security, these tools are like wrenches. You know, you can use it to fix your car or pop someone over the head with it. It's the intent of the tool, okay? Um, give criminals the ability to gather and exploit sensitive data. That's the purpose of this talk, okay? Uh, we use it for good stuff. But the bad guys can use it too. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my grandma getting hacked by these guys. So I want to make sure they understand what can go wrong and how to fix it. All right, now if you're using an iPhone, they don't have root for shark, but you can download a Ubuntu kernel that will be running Kerny, okay? And that is an actual a packet capture program that will do the exact same thing for your iPhone as it will be for your Wireshark or Shark for Root on Android. So either one you got, you could still do this. Now, um, I don't know, I didn't probably didn't say it earlier when I was talking about the iPhone. The iPhone is even easier to root than the um, than the uh, Android device, because a lot of you go to, to jailbreakme.com, or, or I think it's jailbreak.me, and you literally just sometimes will hit a slider. And that slider has the injection in there to make it happen, and then you're rooted. Woohoo! That's fast and simple. Okay? So once you're rooted on that device, you can throw Perny in. All right? So there's your iPhone, there's your Android. All right, so what does that leave us with? Okay, well, we realize that wireless points now are bad, and we have a sea of sharks with them, okay? So <laughs> bad stuff. All right, so here we go. Three steps to hacking you. Really quick, really easy. Turn on your Wi-Fi signal. So you guys know there's a bar here. Okay, even the, the least capable IT person can go click and make that thing go green. So far, so good, right? Okay, and then I go in here, and if any of you guys have used mobile, you know all these steps. You're going in, you're picking your wireless. You go in right here, I'm picking Cthulhu to get into. And now I'm in, and there's some others there, but I'm picking that one. And I'm looking for open Wi-Fi. Why am I choosing open? And this will work for, for also for um, you know, WPA or WEP or whatever they got on. It will work too, as long as you're on the network. Okay? But uh, this one's an open network I, I connect on. Okay, so two steps. I join the public network. All right? And I allow it, right? Because this is, my, this is my super user. This is that exploit through root that kicks it in. Okay? And effectively, I'm up and running now. Now I hash start shark for, or root for shark, shark for whichever one it is, and it will start recording packets, just like it would be if you had a phone conversation and you hit record on a tape recorder. Every packet that's coming through that point, you're going to see. Okay? Now, what happens is, like, you know, a Coney Island wants to up business. So they go and buy an off-the-shelf D-Link router, they put it up, they make it open, and they say, go. What's the problem with that configuration? Everybody sees what? Everybody else. We got an issue because everybody sees everybody's data traffic. So as soon as we do this, it's going to start capturing not only my traffic, but what? Everybody else's. Okay. Now, this can be good and bad. It depends on where you're what you're surfing, what you're doing. We're going to talk about it here in a second. Okay, so you get the concept. Now, there are ways to lock it down, and I'm going to show you guys how we can get around that even. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about where walking is. Now, we have this device. We just walk up. We could be... We could... Uh, um, we could be in like at a park and it's going. And let me, let's talk about this. Now, historically, there was war walking. But war walking, you walked around looking like a, an armadillo or like uh, you know, something. You, you had a backpack on. You had 20 antennas coming off your back. And you look suspicious. You're walking down the street with this backpack and all these things popping off. And you're like, that's suspicious. That person may be war walking. You get that, right? But watch this. One, 
two, three. All right, I'm war walking. You see the antennas on my back? I might grow some later, but they're not there now. Okay. All right, sitting in a, sitting in a parked car. This is called war driving. Now, I don't know about you, but if I came outside my house for two days and some guy's parked right in front of my driveway, he's got a computer and he's staring at it, I'm going to call that suspicious. Again, in my pocket, not suspicious. You have a unmanned aircraft circling your house. This is war flying. You guys heard about this one, right? Okay, and actually there's some law enforcement agencies that are getting these drones, okay? So this is a reality. Um, if you have a hot air balloon over your house, that is war ballooning, okay? You will see that. You will notice a balloon above your house, I promise, okay? And so effectively, this is a new face because war walking is no longer as easily detectable because we're doing it with a wireless device or with a smartphone. Okay, and again, because it's passive sniffing, we're not going to shoot off any IDSs, no problem. Everybody's going to say, hey, this is good. And you don't know who's doing this. It's just that whoever's got that phone in their pocket could be the one that's gathering the packets from this network. Okay, so let's give a definition for you. War walking, the act of lingering or loitering in a geographical area for the purpose of gathering packets without prior authorization, very important, over a public wireless network using a smartphone or tablet. Tablets work too, guys. You can root those and do those also. So as long as they have Wi-Fi capability, you can do this. Okay? And laptops work too. But again, laptops are much higher visibility. So if any of you guys watch Hack 5 and stuff, he'll be sitting with a directional antenna in a bar. You go, okay, I know what the guy's doing. Okay? So at best, you get the jerk status. At worst, you have the police asking, what are you doing? Okay? But again, under this situation, it's in your pocket. No one knows the better. All these packets are being captured right from there. Okay, so, so, so some scenarios that would work. You go to the park, say someone, say, say you know, the bad guy's got a couple kids playing with this kid in the park or his dog. There's an open Wi-Fi down the street. He connects to it, starts that sniffing packet, stays there for an hour, playing Frisbee, having a great time, then goes home and analyzes the packets. Okay? So this problem, hanging out of the mall. You ever see those walkers? There's always those walkers in the mall. They may be war walking you. <laughs> Reading, exactly. <laughs> Reading on a park bench, right? Someone's just sitting there. And notice that this is, you have to kind of stay in the same area because you have to stay connected to that point. You guys with me on that? So that's where the loitering concept comes in. They have a lot of Wi-Fi in movie theaters now. Maybe we can call it war watching. I don't know. It's up to you. You guys, if you like the name, stay with them, okay? All right, eating a meal. Now, this is a big one because, again, many, many restaurants have this, and you need this time. And if you're eating, you know, an omelet or a nice steak, and they got to open Wi-Fi, that whole time, no one's even suspecting what you're doing. But you'd be shocked. When people are waiting for food, what are they doing most of the time? Let me check my Facebook. Let me check my Twitter. And on and on and on, right? OK? So there's a lot of data that could be garnished just by eating a meal and doing this. So war dining is definitely a threat now, as well as war walking. OK, so let's talk about that as again. Uh, by definition, an, author an unauthorized act of gathering packets over a public wireless network with the smartphone or tablet while congregating in a Wi-Fi enabled establishment with the intent of eating or drinking. And this one, this one's a little shaky because the next door neighbor could be the one that has the open Wi-Fi, right? So as long as you can connect to it, good to go, but you have access to it, good enough. Okay, now let's say that they did a good job. They, they you know, you go to your you go to your local resort and they they actually lock down the wireless. And by locking down, it means that once you talk to the wireless point, it turns off the ability for anybody else to see it. Pass, excuse me, passive sniffing will go away. You guys follow me on that? Because I'm sniffing, but the only thing I will see is my network traffic leaving there. You guys good with that? Okay, they have a program that used to be on the Android market um, called ARP spoof. They pulled it just recently. I think about two months ago they pulled it. I still find it on the internet. Cost how much? Zero dollars, zero cents. Okay, so again, we're still at free. Now what this does is it creates a man in the middle session. How does it do it? Look at the name, ARP spoof. It does what? Spoofs ARP. Do you guys know what ARP stands for, by the way? Address resolution protocol, right? OK, and what this is going to do is trick these machines to think that it's talking to the base, but it's really talking to who? You, and then it's taking it from you and transferring it to that point. And from the point, everything's happy. It says all's good. We have all these different IPs from all these different people talking directly to us, but they're not. They're being intercepted first by the, the middle point, which is your Android device or your, or your iPhone. You guys follow me on that? And if you got Wireshark running, what are you doing again? You're gathering all those packets again. We're back where we started. So configuration's not going to help us. What do we do? All right, so we'll talk about that moving forward. We can fix it. This is also a fun one, um, something you can mess around with. And I, I like doing this with my wife and kids. I'll have the network up and running. I'll be going, 
oh, what page are you on? And they go, oh, I don't know, and I'll just pull up Peak. And what Peak does was it will pull, it'll seize that data. I'm not recording all of it. It's looking just for the images. And it will start displaying the images on my phone. Now, this is actually in the Google Play Market for buck ninety-nine. You can download it. But it's a great true tool to let you know if your ARP spoof worked. Because if ARP spoof works, what are you going to start seeing? Pictures. Pictures, okay, stuff like that, all right? So I'll be like, yeah, you know, uh, you, you're at, you know, Scooby-Doo.com. I don't know if that's even a site. Don't go there if you've never been there. <laughs> it's probably not Scooby-Doo. Um, but yeah, so you guys get the concept, right? You guys follow me so far? Everybody there? Okay. All right, so again, this will allow images to be displayed. Easy way to confirm that the ARP spoof's working. Okay, so you've, ga you've gathered the data. You can show that, you, that the data can be, or again, the bad guy's doing this, right? They're on networks they don't have authorized access to, and they're gathering the data. Now, let's talk about what the problem is. Why is it bad to gather data? What's the bad data out there? There's actually, data, data doesn't have to be bad, but there is bad data. What type of data is bad? Data is in what form? Clear text. This is bad for us, because this is a clear text. It means we can reconstruct it in its beauty as a whole, right? And if it happens to be an HTTP-based username and password for your email, guess what I just got or the bad guy just got? Your username and password. And a lot of you guys know that, that email accounts are a lot like our wallets these days. We have resets in there for our banks. This is where our bank goes to reset passwords. This is where a lot of our accounts go. And we just, the bad guy can go in there and search for passwords, and he's going to see all the accounts you've set in the, pa in the past and know what you can reset. You guys follow me on this? So this is bad stuff, all right? Um, so then the question becomes, well, first they need to analyze it, and then we've got to figure out a way to stop it. So let's talk about how analyzation can work. You gather, you know, let's say the, the bad guy gathers a gig of data from some point. They're at a you know, sporting event, and they've played it for four hours, and everybody's joined, everybody's using it, okay? That's a ton of data. So it's hard to find that password in clear text, okay? Now, if any of you guys are network admin, this is an awesome tool, and I suggest looking into it to run on top of Wireshark. Um, it will allow you to aggregate all your data in your system based on all these things that we talked about. So once you get this installed, it's pretty simple. Like I, I just went to the website, and for the home version, it's free. So you know, if you want to test your own network on this, and again, I'll show you some things I gained from my own network from testing it. And again, we're going to do this from a network standpoint, but the bad guy can do it too, right? So it's good for us. It's good for the bad guy. And we, we can thwart the bad guy by doing some simple techniques, and we'll talk about it a little bit. So here we go. I go through NetWitness. I add the bad guy, give him a password. He's got, he's got a fully licensed version of, of NetWitness ready to go. All good. Again, how much did I pay? Wow, I'm still up to zero dollars, and I got all these wonderful tools. OK, what else? So here's a demo collection, and we're just going to leave that. But here's how you bring one uh, uh, collection in. And these slides will be accessible. So if you never use NetWitness, just, I, I did this on purpose so you guys could see how to add a collection. You create a new local collection, you just right click, and it'll, it'll let you pick it, okay? I named this one more walking and dining. You can name whatever you want. So for instance, if you're doing like a pen test for company X, you could write what here? Company X, right? Maybe put a date, let you know if you're doing multiple pen tests, let you know what you're up against. Okay, so there we got the name, and then we hit okay. Now once I get it, it's not ready yet. I have to right click and hit what? Connect. Now I have a, a repository, a container, for the data I want to import. Okay, follow them so far? All right, now I'm going to import the packets. Now, when I did the Wireshark, it created a file that had what extension on it? Dot .pcap. .pcap, good. Okay, so I'm going in. Now, this is exactly right from my phone. These are multiple dumps, okay, right from my, from my network. Um, and again, you can see this organized them. I usually just do it based on time if I want it, right? Um, and then after I'll do it, if I'm, you know, if this was a professional pen test, I would obviously label this, put it in folders, go from there. Um, so I'm just going to bring in here. Now, if I want to bring in all of them, I just select all of them. So a lot of times if I, and I'll do multiples because if this thing errors out before I close the, the file, guess what happens to that entire session? It goes bye-bye. So every once in a while, every 10, 15 minutes, I might close it, reopen it, okay? Am I going to miss packets that way? Yeah, but there's still probably be some juicy stuff there. Okay, so I get them in. It's going to import. You see it just goes 0 to 100. Boom, imported. Good to go. Okay, now when we open it up, we get this aggregated view. This is really powerful, and this is great for you admin out there. Because what you'll see is it'll give you all your alerts up here. Okay, so up here it tells me there's a sample vulnerability, non-standard HTTP. That means that something might have been spoofed. You guys go with that? Okay, or there could be maybe some type of SQL injection, PHP issue, okay? But it's something I want to look into. There's one of them. There, oh, look at this one. Sample vulnerability, it's clear text, password. Oh, we're going to have fun with that one, okay? And then there's some other malicious possible IRC information going on. So this system could be compromised. You guys know that IRC is the backdoor channel for a lot of 
command and control devices, right? You guys familiar with that? Okay. Um, and down here, look at this. User accounts, I might have two gigs, but it tells me right here. I have an SA. SA is usually used for what type of devices? What well, usually uses SA as a name for an admin? Yeah, databases, right? Databases will use that. So uh-oh, we might have someone's database login credentials, and that can get really ugly. Let's say it's a bank. What do they keep in their databases? How much money do you have? Bad guy could get rich in three seconds. Five million bucks, go. Okay, another one, Joanne Sample and Bobby, we add them in. And look at this, it even has some emails for these people. And again, we saw that emails can be dangerous too, right? So I, I click on one of these. What I do here is I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna right click on this login um, and say, to say, um, drill down. When I drill down, it's gonna give me this view. And look at this, this is that packet. Here's the username, here's their password, here's their email. This is big, this, this is big, right? This is, this is really bad. And, and, and if this was, let's say, Active Directory credentials, what could they do? Yeah, they could do a lot, right? They, especially if this has a, and, and just because they're a regular user isn't always mean that they can't do much. What can happen on the exploitation side if someone logs in with a regular user? What can they do to get up to admin? What's it called? An escalation hack, right? This is a, priv this is a privileged hack, you, you bake the user, through, uh, once you're logged in, you put in a exploit that then gives them admin credentials, okay? All right, now you say, okay, well, yeah, the passwords aren't that big to me. Now, if you were using NetWitness, uh, what is it, which one was it? Uh, 9.5 or higher, you will get this new button. And this thing will allow you to then mold whatever you want out of here. So not only do I get, do I get your password, I get any, Conversations, let's say this is a, a call center, they will do computer calls in WAV formats. I don't know if you guys know this. Okay, so I would get all the calls. Let's say it's healthcare. Am I HIPAA compliant if they're getting the phone calls? No. Uh, video, documents, web, images, archives, executable bit torrents. Okay, you can even find out if the people in the, in the network are doing bit torrents. And if it's not on this list, what do you do? You can make your own. So you have total control under this. This is a very powerful tool. Okay, and again, this was that hard. All we had to do was push some buttons, and it told me exactly what the username and password was, okay, which I see here. Now, some lessons learned. Let me explain what, I, what I've learned from using this. Now, where I felt this was really important was is I was at home. I was sniffing my traffic, and I realized that I had about five times a minute my Active Directory credentials popping out on the web, just going, here, here I am. And they were in clear text, okay? And then right then I changed my diaper, okay? And I said, wow, I'm glad I caught this because any time I join a public Wi-Fi, guess what's gonna happen? Yeah, now when I come to, what I come to discover was that the Exchange server was misconfigured. It was allowing guest, a guest access through HTTP, which is what? And what did I need to make the change to? HTTPS. HTTPS, once that change occurred, it all became cryptic again because it added what to it? Once I put that S on? <laughs> encryption, right? We added encryption to the, to the mix. And then, so I found it before the bad guys did. If someone was sniffing me, whether it was their computer, laptop, or phone, they would have got these credentials. And that could have been a backdoor into the system that was Active Directory based. Okay, so uh, this really is good to be a proactive way to see if you have credentials leaking. So I suggest definitely on all your devices, take this information, check your own device, see what it's leaking. If you have any, and this all came from, I had an app, an email app that synced with my Exchange server, that's what caused this. It had a configuration that I was misconfigured and I had to say use SSL versus use whatever it was and it kicked in. But again, I would have never have known that if I would not have done a Wireshark slash NetWitness against my own machine, okay? Um, some other interesting things. Now, if you guys heard of a program called Creepy? Yeah, what's a Creepy do? Yeah, it's creepy because what it does is that wherever you go, if you log into an IP point, it will see that IP point. It might say, you are here. So like you could call someone of your friends if you had a creeper right now and be like, I see you're at the sporting event. And you'll really freak them out because it's IP. But when some of these apps phone home, it's trivial for people that know the code that can get in to adjust the code if these things are dialing out all the time. So what I noticed was Angry Birds was jumping to, to some site for updates. So every time I knocked on the door, now let's say this was unique to me, I could make this a signature for Creepy and what could happen? You could, check, you could track my whereabouts every time this thing phoned home. You guys good with that? You guys understand what's going on here? So it's, it's very important that, again, we have these tools, your computers with all these packets. We don't really think about it like that. We think about it as, ah, eh, I got my phone, ah, eh, whatever, okay? But this is what's going on under the hood. 
So we got to know about this stuff. Okay, so we're only halfway there now. Now I started thinking, all right, well, so we are able to take, we can hit a mobile spot, we can get this, but what if there is no mobile spot? Okay, and this worked great at B-Side Chicago. B-Side Chicago didn't have a lot of mobile access. Um, what you do is you add, you know, take a bad guy, bad girl with their, with their jailbroken or rooted device, you take a Wi-Fi tethering app, you take a little bit of social engineering, and you get Wi-Fi faking. Let's talk about what this is. Okay, so the act of configuring a smartphone as a Wi-Fi hotspot using socially engineered naming conventions like free internet with the sole purpose of luring devices and individuals to join the network with the intent of capturing and exploiting personal confidential data. So what I could do is, and you guys may have seen that here, and it didn't work good here, and we'll talk why, and if, if, if I was a real bad guy, I wouldn't do this because I had to, I had to give you guys something I controlled. If you guys looked on your free on your on your Wi-Fi earlier, you may have saw you may have saw a BS free internet. Did anybody see that out there? Okay, if you've seen that, that was me. Okay, now that worked great. And what I do is, it's on the more morality side is I have a filter. So anybody that knocks on the door and says let me in, I don't let them in. But I can see who knocked. So it's the bobber going down, but I'm never reeling in the fish. So I don't take any packets. I just want to see how many people are joining. You guys with me? No, no, no damage done here. No ethics broken. However, if this is a bad guy, they could easily say what? Okay. Allow, and they got the web shark going, and that's crazy stuff, okay? Now, I will talk about why it didn't work so well here. I'd love to say it's because I, I opened up awareness at B-Side Chicago, and everybody's aware of it now, and no one's doing it. There's a different reason here, and again, we'll talk about it, see if you guys can figure it out at the end. Okay, so once you got this point, let's say I'm running it right now, and you guys are joined to it, and I'm stealing packets, this is stroll trolling. So the bad guy's walking around, and again, I don't look like anybody else. I don't have any wires off my back, no antennas. I'm just hanging around and letting you guys use my free internet. Oh, and while you're using it, I'm, I'm stealing everything you give me, by the way. But you know, that's the trade-off, right? I mean, if you think about it just a little bit, it's what Google and Yahoo and everybody else does, Facebook. You are the commodity. Think about it. OK, so um, examples of stroll trolling. Let's say we go to Lions game. OK, and they might have a free internet connection. Well, we'll change ours to what? Lions free Wi-Fi. Would you guys say, well, this must be the Lions. You just look at your thing. Hey, this might be it. Join it. Okay. Um, another one, you just let's say you're at a mall or any crowded area. And again, you want people around for this because if it's just me in a park, it's just creepy. It's not helping me at all. Okay. Um, that, that would be like something like free internet. Okay. Uh, name of mobile Wi-Fi hotspot. Here, now this is, this is where it got tricky. So I could have done GM free internet. I can't do that. The reason being, if I would have done that, people from GM inside here would have done what? Try to join, and I'm not letting them in. I would actually DOS them, okay? So I didn't do it. I kept it to B-Sides Free Internet because that was the deal. So really what happened here in this environment was that if you guys all looked online, there was an absolute ton of open connections, right? And there's one you know that's associated with this place called GM, right? So you might have clicked on that one, and that's the one you used, all right? Now, based on the stuff I told you, what would I have done different if I was the bad guy? I wouldn't have spoofed and did a stroll troll. What would I have done? I would have joined the GM, I would have ARP spoof if necessary, and then I would have captured packets that way. You guys go with that? So I don't need that environment. But if there's no Wi-Fi and you guys are hungry to save your minutes and I turn it on, I'm the savior. At least it looks like I am. But really, this is a social engineering attack. I'm stealing data, okay? And again, that's how the bad guy's gonna do it, all right? So I hope this helps drive home the fact that untrusted networks are not safe networks. Are you guys good with that? We're gonna talk about some remediation here coming up. Okay, so where do I feel this falls? Now, again, on the corporate side, it might be medium because you have to have physical proximity. It's not all over the world, okay? But it's super easy to do, and your mother, your sister, anybody with a smartphone is subject to this, okay? So in my opinion, that the probability of being able to push some buttons to make it happen is pretty high. I think anybody in this room, if I showed you a button to click, you could make it happen. The impact, if they steal your, say, your Active Directory credentials or any password credentials, that's pretty high. Would you guys agree? Okay, so you know, I put it up here. All right, again, you know, every every type of security person would have their own matrix they set up. You should be familiar with this. If you guys know any security or if you're in security, you guys are familiar with this matrixing system, right? Okay, very simple, um, but that, that's where we're sitting now. Okay, so let's talk about fixing this. All right, now how do we fix computers? So, so again, let's think of these things as computers. How do we fix computers from having these issues? They've had these issues for years. What do we do to fix them? I can't do that, there's too many. What else we got? What was the other one? Updating and patching helps in terms of um, our exploitation, but it doesn't help in terms of hiding the data or making the data in another form. 
Encryption, what kind of tools do we have out there that can help encrypt for laptops? In fact, if you guys, any of you guys do any remoting to your work, you're probably using one. What did you have to use before you got onto that network? Hopefully, and if you didn't, don't tell me, okay? You're using a VPN, all right? Which means that everything going through there is what? Encrypted, Encrypted okay. But let's say that that's gonna have a cost associated, so let's just start off with the good and the free and see what happens. All right, the first thing, some of your devices will just auto join any open network because you're trying to save money. What should you do to that feature? Turn it off. And if you're not using Wi Fi and you don't have to use the Wi Fi, then just don't use it. Okay, so long story short, don't trust any external point out there. If you don't own it and it's not encrypted for you, don't use it. Or if you have to use it, understand that this is something that's probably public and go from there. All right, so you stop your device from auto connecting to an open available hotspot. Um, when you can, for instance, a lot of old school, Google used to do HTTP, um, Twitter, Facebook would all do HTTP. If you logged in with that, you would have those credentials out there. Now, the good news is many of this problem's been happening for years on the computer side, so they've made most of these what now? Okay, so when you have a choice between picking one or the other and you're on a public Wi-Fi, which one do you pick? Okay, so just be smart about it. Same thing you would do with your laptop, okay? Um, but the problem is with this, even though that site is encrypted, you're still leaking DNS information. Angry Birds is still phoning home, and they're still seeing all the clear text. So, yeah, I was going to bring up one thing. You've got to be really careful about this because, um, especially if you're using Webmail, usually when you log in, when you, when you go to log on the login page, it's HTTPS. But usually, once you go to view your email, it bounces it back down to HTTP. So now, so you don't have your password, but all your email associated. <coughs> Right, and then I'll think about it. Let's say you're running for an office and you just got some results back from the doctors that said, yeah, I don't know, you had some type of, you know, your heart's enlarged, you're, you're, you're a health risk, and you're running for president. If that gets out there, that could be a problem. These are extreme situations, but you get the concept, right? Data leakage, when you don't want it leaked, is a bad thing. It's not a good thing. Okay, so we see that some of it, some of it will help. Like you said, you got to be careful. But in the long run, this still isn't perfect. This is just, you didn't pay any money. You're trying to be smart about using public um, Wi-Fi points. Okay, what we need though is first let's talk about the paradigm shift. All right, think of these like when you guys go to library and surf, you don't do your most intimate surfes, searches on the library computer, at least I hope you don't, okay? Um, because this is a public terminal. These are being monitored, it's all being recorded. In fact, in the background, they're probably running Wireshark on this stuff to make sure it's staying legit. So anything you put on here is going to get picked up. Well, the good news is the people that do this are usually good guys. So if you happen to, to leak your data, Okay, well then they will see it and they say, all right, that was a no-no, but don't do it. But if their purpose is to steal it, we got something new. Okay, um, so assume all actions are being watched and monitored when any time you use open Wi-Fi. You guys go with that? Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. Um, now this is kind of cool. If you guys do have the unlimited data, um, and, and this comes in handy for me, when I'm anywhere in public, I actually won't use my, the public Wi-Fi. I will turn my Wi-Fi phone into a pretty strong password, WPA2 encrypted hotspot, and I will be the only one using it. And then even if I'm running Wireshark, it's just on myself and no one else is in. You guys with me on that? But if you have restrictions on your minutes or on your data, now we have a new issue because all now you're actually using more. You guys cool with that? So this isn't that great. So here's the best, okay? Um, oh, this is actually still in the middle. Or, or no, this is, I'm sorry, this is the best. Um, or I'm sorry, the better, low cost. All right, so if you guys go to, say, Verizon, and you go to get like the 8 gig plan instead of the 4 gig plan, I think it's like 20 bucks. Anybody check on it? Anybody know that that's the case? Like to up it, it's, it's, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, you go from like 10 bucks on your plan to like 50. It's like 40 bucks a month. You do the math, that's almost 500 bucks a year, okay? So here's a trick I do, and this is great for both my laptop. If I, I don't have a tablet right now, but if I had a tablet, it would work on a tablet, and on my phone. I will purchase, a, and this is, and I, I've, been, I've been shopping around for a long time. They usually run about... Uh, 10 bucks a month, usually about 100 bucks, okay? But again, that's still way better than 500 bucks, it's a good data plan. But I found that IPVPN, and I don't have any affiliation with them, but they do it if you buy a year, it's 37 bucks for the whole year, three bucks a month, okay? I've been using them for about nine months now, they're rock solid, they do a great job. They're a little slow because I'm going out to other locations, but if I have to jump on a mobile Wi-Fi, I will jump on, tell my phone with an app called, uh, I have an app out there called, uh, was it at uh, v five VPN, which is five clicks to get it running, and I'll turn on VPN, and now everything I do in that Wi-Fi spot, wi spot is in what form? Encrypted. encrypted. And when I do my Wireshark now, it'll come through and say this is all encrypted. It went through a VPN connection. We can't help you. So if the bad guy's sniffing, and even if they're spoofing, 
we're, we're good, right? I mean, to a high degree, there are ways to crack VPN. We know that, right? But it's going to be defense in depth layers, right? And we've added a layer here. And that's cool about this is this works. Like, so if you have your laptop on a, high, on a Wi-Fi spot, it works there. You got your tablet. You got your phone. It all will work under the same account as long as you're just using one concurrent connection. Okay, So don't hand it to all your relatives. Say, use this, because you may not be able to log in. All right, so, so far so good. You guys good with that? All right, so now let's talk about from a corporate standpoint. All right, so this is you guys as users, your mothers, your sisters, your brothers, your cousins. Tell them about this. Say, you know, hey, go spend, go use, go do IPVPN. Spend, you know, 40 bucks a year and use this for all your devices. If you've got to connect to an open Wi-Fi, if you've got to save that data, you can save that data, okay, this way. And again, it has a little bit of cost with it, but that's pretty cheap. Three bucks a month, you know. I mean, I, I'm not going to do the Sally Struthers cup of coffee, but that's pretty close, okay, especially at Starbucks. You probably can't get it for that. All right. Um, so bring your own devices, malware, infections. Now, this is a problem. Now, this is a new feature that a lot of people say, we want you to let our phones in on here. I don't know why they're doing it, because if it was a laptop, they'd say, no, 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 without all the proper things. But they have that hard time making that conception, computer with, computer with uh, apps versus, or uh, phone, <coughs> computer with phone capability versus phone with apps, right? So with that, you can get infections. In fact, there's actually been, uh, I forget the name of it now, but it is a Mac hack that um, waits until it sees a Windows machine and then it pounces. So it's sitting on the device. It could be sitting on the iPhone just going, let me add a Windows box, let me add a Windows box, and then jumps to it when it gets there, OK? So these devices can harbor all these bad things. Also, we said they're subject to our war walking, our war dining, all the things that we talked about earlier, OK? Remote access resources. Um, you know, you're using these out on the field. You're, you're going to a job to do an assessment. Okay, again, war walking, war dining, stroll trolling, all a problem. And the other problem is, let's say you go to run to use the bathroom real quick, and you come back, your laptop's gone, your phone's gone. If it was actively in a session, they can get information. You guys with me? Now, again, threat's a little small, and I hope if you guys go use the restroom, it's much easier to put your phone in your pocket. Don't leave it on the table. But stuff happens, you know. Um, you know, people leave their phone in crazy places, and things happen. Okay, we all know. We've all lost devices, and this is the, the threat that we come with it. Okay. Um, so again, make sure that your IT department, if they're going to bring in here, bring these in, they don't look at it as a phone. They look at it as what? It should be under the same policies as your laptops and your tablets. You guys go with that? OK. Um, it should be replaced in the remote access domain. If you guys know the seven domains of security, this is effectively you're connecting external, which makes it a laptop or a tablet. OK, so we're good there. Now, when you can, you want to use either SSL, certificates, corporate VPN to bring it into the network, OK? And that's good for a couple of reasons. That helps you. Um, you can segregate the network. You can bring this tra traffic into your network and then make sure it's subject to the corporate proxy and things like that. Um, I don't know if you guys know or not. Let's say that someone does bad things on a, at, a, at a company computer on site. Who's responsible? The employer as well as the employee. They both are responsible. But nonetheless, it's kind of, it's kind of bad for the employer because they didn't know that guy that was gonna, or girl was going to come and do that bad thing, right? But they still are liable, OK? So if we can bring that data back in and make it subject to things like ACLs and group policy and proxies, we can start filtering that out because we don't let them go to those malicious websites. We don't let them go to those uh, you know, un-G-rated sites, OK? And this stuff will help us in terms of um, keeping this stuff working well. All right, so what's the takeaway? Uh, we have a computer in our pockets that can make phone calls instead of a phone with apps. Good with that, right? OK, uh, public Wi-Fi points can be dangerous if one does not understand what's at risk or what's at stake, right? Again, anything that you guys don't own and as other people join, whether it's McDonald's or it's, a, or it's a Coney Island or it's Cedar Point, that if you don't own it, you can't, be, you can't ensure that someone's not taking over this traffic. Airplanes do it now, too. I don't know if you guys know you can join Wi-Fi in airplanes. This is all subject to these attacks, and this is really easy. Think about that. You have your phone, your board. OK, I, everybody on this plane, and all these CEOs that are sending their data, oh, and they didn't use VPN, mwaha, right? Just work on your evil laugh the whole time. All right. <laughs> Ask everyone if, if, they, if they've heard of these terms. So when you're talking to people, if you're talking to your mom, your sister, they have a smartphone, go ahead and talk about this stuff. Say, hey, have you ever heard of stroll trolling? Huh, what's that? Have you ever heard of war walking, war dining? Huh, what's that? This gives you, now you guys have a platform of definitions that will help push forward some conversation on this stuff so they understand the threats. And again, this is, you know, this is a new face to an old problem. We've had this for years with tablets and laptops, okay? But people really don't see their phones as falling in these categories. All right, and so I, I had the B-sides up and running, uh, the, the BS free internet. I, now, when I did B-side Chicago, I only had to run like two hours. 
I was able to get almost 50 people to join. Reason being is there wasn't a lot of access there. So people want to join and whatever was open and free, so they jumped on mine. <laughs> Here, there's a ton, OK? So they, I would easily, like I said, if I was a bad guy, I would spoof into their existing network and then grab them that way, OK? So it didn't work as well here. I would love to say it was because I've educated the world in terms of these things and, and they're not doing it anymore. But I really don't think that was the, the case today. But let's say you were um, hit with this. Um, you know, what's the sensitive data on your machine? Have you checked that? What precautions are you taking to safeguard it? And do you have a VPN if you're using a wireless, a wireless point? And again, these VPNs will work on all your devices. So you know, search into that, save you some money. OK, and then references, and we're done. So any questions for me? You guys good? Everybody's good? Everybody knows the threats that they probably already knew about, wire, about public access points? Yes, sir. It is, but it's not that someone in China is logging in to get those packets. Right, but you have somebody, if you're a large enough company, you have somebody visiting China, it doesn't mean that they're, they can't just go in there either. I agree with you. That's why I put it up in the high category. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody else? You guys good? Okay, so let me put that one up. Yep, oh, where you at? Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot, you know, I, and a, a number of people, you know, I've seen their DEF CONs, which is exactly what they use. You know, that's a, you know, they have open Wi-Fi there, and of course, you know, it's like, why am I going to use open Wi-Fi <laughs> with, with 10,000 other hackers or whatnot? Right. But, um, Scary. Yeah. Um, you were, you know, like if you had like a green host account or something like that, what you can actually do is run a, you know, run an SSH proxy on that. Mm -hmm. I agree, that's awesome, but these phones are owned by grandma, by mom, by sisters and brothers that don't know IT. They're never going to tunnel an SSH out through that phone, right? Okay, but I mean, is the setting up the VPN easy as well? Well, it depends. I mean, for instance, the VPN here is literally, once you purchase the service, it's an externally run. Now, here's the deal with that. It's not perfect because what's going to happen once you VPN tunnel? It's going to come out on their side as clear text again, well, but there's no one there to sniff it. What? Right, now, but if it's a corporate base, they're going to have the VPN internal and it's going to explode out into their network, which is different. You guys cool with that? You guys understand the difference there? Okay, so, I don't know, did I answer your question? No. No, I was just going to mention that's another alternative. Yeah, yeah and, if, and a, lot of people, no a lot of people are skilled in this room. If you guys want to use things like SSH or any type of encryption on it, great, go for it. But the problem is, like I said, people go to the store, they buy their Verizon phone, and they go, I got a new phone. And they go to any mobiles, they go, I want to save my data, and they go on, okay? And again, if they're logging on to certain accounts, they're going to get, you know, especially if anybody has like really old AOL accounts or something, and like I said, grandma and mom, they might have been around 10 years doing it, they still don't use any encryption. So these accounts will just be sucked in and all that data will be presented. So what, I'm, what I tried to offer here was instead of giving these complex SSH was just simply go pay some money and go from there. A good way to prevent ARP spoofing. Um, Use, use, you don't use open connections. That's pretty much it. If you are and say you have a WPA and, and, and a WPA2 um, enabled router at home with a 15 character password or more, you're probably pretty safe. They're not going to ARP you because they got to join to ARP you. What if they're on the same network? If they're on the same network, network, you're pretty much in trouble. Now, there are some stuff you can do, but the what, what only thing you, that I know that, that can be done is, is that you can. It may be, be able to pick up, because you are, you are ARP spoofing, if there's an error with it, it may be pick up in irregularities in terms of the data. Still very hard to pick up because it's a man in the middle attack. It says, you know, Alice and Bob, if you guys are familiar with this, right? You put the man in the middle, and then from the man in the middle, there's two NIC cards. Alice usually talks directly to Bob, but now that Alice is talking to the middle machine, and it's setting up its NIC card on the far side to look just like Bob, and the one on the other side to look just like Alice. So from Alice and Bob's perspective, they're the same places. You guys cool with that? So the ARP spoofing is creating that type of connection, so it's very difficult to catch. Not all I'm not sure about the phones, but not all devices are, are susceptible to ARP, ARP spoofing. That's so true. It that works is it, you know, if you're the device that wants to be the, uh, the new, you know, the, the man in the middle has to send out a gratuitous ARP uh -huh. for, you know, advertising, hey, I'm your network gateway. Right, right. Uh, yeah, and I have a lot a, of systems, like I can recall a, 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 something like that. <coughs> Any, any. Advertise this stuff as a gateway, and everybody who, everybody in the office who 
front of windows all of a sudden lost their internet. You know, yeah. they have black yeah. holes. And everybody else, I mean, most of the engineers I work with, including myself, are running Linux and we did not have this problem. Before. God bless Linux. The stack did not, the stack did not accept the computer's ARP. Yeah. So again, there's a lot of problems here, but again, even if we VPN it and they ARP it, are we good? Yeah, we're good because, again, it's encrypted at this point. So I don't think there's an easy solution for ARP, but if we take a, an ounce of prevention, it's worth a pound of cure here. Anybody else? And uh, we have to wrap up. Good? All right, thank you, guys. I appreciate it.